Right, welcome to the channel, ladies and gentlemen. So is Godzilla vs. Kong in trouble? Is it in trouble? Is it going to go down under? Is it going to go down at the box office? Why? Well, we've got a runtime, and also it's going to be going up against James Bond. So I'm not overly sure what I've titled this video, but there's a lot going against the film. Or so you might think. I'm going to be really positive here. Yes, I am. But I'm also going to outline some... Some very key factors as to why I, you know, logical uh, and analytical assumptions, uh, I guess you could say. It's just straight facts here on this channel. So, look, Godzilla vs. Kong is going to be going up against James Bond at the box office. That's a, an inarguable fact. Uh, it's part and parcel of what's happened recently because, of course, James Bond has been moved due to good old Budweiser disease. Um, we're going to call it that because YouTube censors out everything. <laughs> I can't say it, but never mind. Um, so, of course, the upcoming James Bond film, No Time to Die, has been officially delayed due to CV. Uh, and it's been delayed until November. Now, that's an issue. Okay, It was originally going to be released, uh, well, literally next month or the end of this month, I believe it was. Early, early April, end of March, one of the two. But now, uh, it's going up against... Godzilla versus Kong. And you might think to yourself, God damn, this sounds terrible. Two behemoths at the box office. What's going on? Now, let's read this report, and I'll tell you actually why I think this is a really good news. I don't think this is bad at all. And it goes into the recent information we heard that uh, Godzilla versus Kong runtime was going to be under two hours. And I know a lot of people heard that news and was like, oh, it's so bad. Trust me. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna open your eyes to something. So due to the recent outbreak of the CV, the upcoming 25th installment in the James Bond franchise, No Time to Die, has been delayed until November 25th, which I actually really like that delay, the fact that it's the 25th uh, outing for Bond and it's November 25th. I like that. Uh, now, obviously, that's in the United States. Now, this move now pits the film directly against Godzilla vs. Kong, which releases the week before it on November 20th. Now, again, you might hear that. You might hear that's real bad. It's not. Now, with this announcement, it now seems that two of the largest film franchises in history, Godzilla and Bond, Godzilla is one of the largest film franchises in history, uh, will battle each other at the box office this coming fall. Now, um, what did we hear about Godzilla vs. Kong recently, which riled everyone up? The runtime. The runtime. Everyone thought that was terrible, because it said it ran just a little under two hours. Now, the runtime is important, and a lot of people seem to take that as a as a negative because they seem to think that, well, there's not enough time for Godzilla and Kong to fight. <laughs> there absolutely is. Um, there absolutely is, without a shadow of a doubt. Now, uh, one of the reasons why a lot of people seem to have an issue with this is because they think that there's going to be a lot of creatures introduced in this film and that this is the last movie in the monsterverse so these are all assumptions now again we don't know whether it's under two hours we can assume that it is it came from a pretty legitimate source but let's analyze all of these statements and these assumptions for for a quick second the assumption that this is the last outing for godzilla uh, and kong in the monsterverse is based on a few things which i would say i disagree with now, I don't think that this is the last one. I think that this will still continue. They've announced a lot of toys, a lot of merchandise, a lot of licensing for this film and for the MonsterVerse beyond it. Now, Toho have been very vocal about how happy they are with the MonsterVerse, what Legendary is doing, and of course what Warner Brothers are doing in partnership with Legendary for the MonsterVerse. So this is not... I'd be very surprised if this is the last outing. I, I would genuinely be very surprised. But let's let's discuss it, even if it was the very last outing. Okay, let's take a look at the run times for all of the other movies. Now, Godzilla 2014 had a run time a little over two hours. Two hours, three minutes, in fact. And that was a film which many, many people complained about as having too much human nonsense in the movie. Godzilla King of the Monsters, the most recent film, which amped up uh, really, really amped up all of the monster battles. Had a runtime of only 2 hours 12 minutes. 
And another in the MonsterVerse was Kong Skull Island. That had a runtime of two hours. So for Godzilla vs. Kong to have a runtime of sub two hours, a little under, so just under two hours, when we compare all of the common complaints that people have had, it's the same people complaining that this runtime is too low, uh, would be the ones saying, that yeah, no, too much uh, human interaction, uh, too much this, too much that, and oh yeah, Kong Skull Island was good, there was lots of monsters, etc, etc, etc. Sub two hours is absolutely fine. Please do not be worried. Sub two hours is not a big deal at all. It really isn't. Especially when we can compare directly to all of the other movies. So 2014's common complaint, too much human nonsense, right? Not enough Godzilla, too much. That's the common complaint. Not mine, but the common complaint. So again, two hours, three minutes, sub two hours. Why are we thinking now all of a sudden that there's not enough time for all of these monster fights? When we say that, well, actually, there was plenty of time for all of this human interaction, yeah? So there definitely is more time. And then Godzilla King of the Monsters amped up the, 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 the monster fighting action with numerous monsters. You know, introduced three new monsters in there, plus also multiple uh, other titans and kaiju kind of floating in, in, in there behind the scenes. I mean, that's two hours, 12 minutes. And that was very little human. But still, again, one of the common complaints about that film was still a large, by and large, a human story. That's two hours, 12 minutes. So if they condense it and they remove what people complained about so much, which was the human story, two hours is fine. It's absolutely fine. Kong Skull Island, a movie which most people seem to really, really enjoy. Um, I don't think there was too many complaints about that film surrounding the monster action. I could be wrong, but I don't think there was anyway. That's a movie, again two hours so I think people are, are kind of getting ahead of themselves a little bit here now the main thing when we say about the runtime which is actually a blessing in disguise here is that the runtime for a movie which is now going to be uh, it's going up against so no time to die two hours 43 minutes two hours 43 minutes now that massively impacts the amount of showings that can be had in a day for that film. Now, obviously, you know, films only have certain screens dedicated to it, and certain screens dedicated to it allow for certain showings and certain timings of those showings per day. Now, if Godzilla vs. Kong is a hit, in that second week, they will have more showings and, and same amount of screens, but more showings in a day because they are sub two hours. They have the ability to do that. It's just basic mathematics. So I actually think that Godzilla vs. Kong's runtime is going to be a huge factor in its success. Genuinely a huge, huge, huge factor in its success. I don't think No Time to Die is going to be a huge uh, threat against it. Because if we compare some movies which recently came out which had very extended runtimes, um, but were still critically well received. Blade Runner 2049, for instance, ran about 2 hours 45 minutes. And one of the... One of the, the hindrances to that film was the showings that it can put on. There's not an awful lot of buzz for No Time to Die. Okay, There's genuinely not. Now, it's a name property. It's a franchise. People will definitely go and see it. I'm not saying that they won't. But their ability to see it and their sort of op opportunities to see it in a day are actually highly restricted by its overlong runtime. Two hours, 43 minutes. So is Godzilla vs. Kong... Is it going to bomb? Is it, is it got some problems? Is it uh, is it going up against something and will the runtime hinder it? No, I actually think the runtime will be assisting this movie moving forwards. Absolutely. So hopefully I've kind of qualmed some of your issues here and there. You know, bear with me on this. I genuinely think it's going to be a success. But anyway, love to hear your thoughts. Let me know down below in the comments section. I just need to take this opportunity, guys. Please do hit subscribe to my second channel. I will leave it linked down below in a pinned comment. It's called More Mr. H Reviews. There's nothing there at the moment, but YouTube is massively, it's just bitch slapping my channel around right now, uh, and I need to be prepared for the worst case scenario, i.e. the channel just goes down. I thought this would happen with copper and things like that. You guys don't get notified of stuff. And in fact, if I produce any more than three videos in a day, which obviously I do because it's topical videos, you know, it's news, and journalist channel and you know movie reviews and things like that um you guys don't get notified of it so it's a bigger it's a really really big issue um i'm not sure what i'm going to do with the second channel yet this channel will still be here and i will still run it 
but if all you know if worse comes to worse i'll have to migrate over to the second channel so hit subscribe make sure you turn the bell notifications on to that but anyway guys thank you so much for watching i've been mr h take care